Gentlemen, please join me in a warm press club welcome for Dr. Kim Dejong. Thank you, Chairman Klein, uh, for your kind invitation, uh, introduction. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am very much pleased to be here with you today. I have come here with my cane because I am an injury in my hip joints because of military government assassination. But I have never used this cane and will never use for the purpose of caning to anybody else. Uh. <clears throat> Thank you. I will now share my ideas on the three problems confronting the uh, United States today in Asia. They are the North Korean nuclear problem, desirable relations between the U.S. and East Asian nations, and those between the U.S. and Korea. It is possible to resolve the North Korean nuclear problem that has been Conf confounding us and taxing our patients, I am convinced it is. That is because North Korea's goal in this adventure is not to develop nuclear weapons, but to realize its number of one foreign policy objective. Normalization of diplomatic, diplomatic relations with the United States. Kim Il-sung desperately hopes through diplomatic relations and economic cooperation with the West to escape from the hopeless economic situation and the extreme international isolation so that he can pass a stable regime to uh, on to his son. Needless to say, it is impossible for the North to improve its relations with the West unless it gives up the development of nuclear weapons. These two are mutually incomparable, incomparable. Until the 1953, Armistice, Kim, Kim Il-sung attempted to uh, unify the Korean peninsula using military force. After that attempt failed, he tried to repeat it repeatedly to instigate a uh, communist revolution from within South Korea. But following the collapse of the Soviet Union, and the disintegration of the communist governments in East Europe, Pyongyang began to experience international isolation and rapid deterioration of its economy. As a result, the North made a series of policy shifts. In 1991, North Korea made three major concessions to the West. The first was the joint entry together with South Korea into the United Nations, which the North Korea had opposed for more than three decades. The, <coughs> excuse me. The second was the acceptance of cross recognition of two Koreas by the world community, especially the US, Japan, Russia, and China, which South Korea and the West had advocated since 1973. The third was its mutual recognition of the 
South and the North Korean governments as legitimate entities by signing a North-South agreement in December 1991. Though this series of concessions advocated by the <coughs> murderers, Kim Il-sung expected a quid pro quo in the form of diplomatic and economic cooperation from the West. He also anticipated the cancellation of the annual team split exercise, but such expectations have not been fulfilled. <laughs> Consequently, the hardliners gained the upper hand, and the result was the North Korean declaration of its intention to pull out of the of the MP, NPT and a series of very, very belligerent uh, statements. The hardliners think if we are given no way out but to ruin, we, must, we might as well go down fighting to the end. North Korea doesn't have military capability to win a full-scale war but has enough power to inflict casualties to millions of South Korean, Koreans and Americans. When North Korea announced, announced <coughs> its decision to abrogate the MPT on March 12 last year, I was at Cambridge University as a visiting fellow. Upon hearing the news, I immediately proposed a two-prolonged approach to this problem, a package deal, package of simultaneous give and take, together with cooperation from China. What should each side give and take? Two things should be given from each side simultaneously. North Korea must give up its nuclear ambition and guarantee South Korea's security. At the same time, the United States must uh, reciprocate with diplomatic normalization leading to economic cooperation. And North Korea's security assurance, including the cancellation of the annual team split exercise. However, it is important for the United States to consult with China and seek its cooperation on the North Korea's nuclear weapon program. China would no doubt cooperate in this matter because the nuclear is issue is not only Korea's and the United States' problem, but also China's problem. And because China too does, does not want North Korea to possess nuclear weapons. This is a foolproof approach. If the North Korea accepts this package deal, so much the better. If, on the other hand, Kim Il-sung rejects this package, China will have no choice but to support economic sanctions, unless, of course, it is willing to endure international criticism and lose faith. This is nothing for us to lose with this one-shot package deal. We do not need to waste time any longer. I am not saying we should trust North Korea, but simply test is its real intention. We are now entering the era of the Asia-Pacific region. If the United States really believes itself to be an Asian Pacific country as declared by President Clinton, the U.S. must understand the sensibility of Asians. To an Asian, faith saving is as important as 
saving his life instead of the give and take method of the West. An East Asian, Asian if he feels he is treated with dignity, may cheerfully give to for one. On the other hand, if he is displeased, he might reject the deal together altogether, no matter how advantageous to him. To formulate policies based on accurate understanding of these characteristics, characteristics of the Asian sensibility is to assure the success of American foreign policies and gaining friends in the, in the, in the Asian Pacific region. Face saving is reciprocal. reciprocal. I save your face, then you will save my face. The United States is the only country that bases its foreign policies on human rights. And it is important for the U.S. to stay the course. And I give high marks to the U.S. But the U.S. must re respect the Asian way of thinking, especially face saving, to get good results. I do not have a right to meddle in the international affairs of the U United States. However, since U.S. actions in Asia will profoundly affect us and as a friend of America, I am compelled to ask you to respect face saving as an Asia, Asian way, while insisting on human rights progress and improvement in trade partnerships practices. This is how to ensure success in the long run. We feel very strongly about the tactics America has used in opposing Beijing's bid for the Olympics, pressing China on MFN and advancing its trade interest with Japan, South Korea, and other Asian countries, Asian nations. Face saving is even more important in dealing with North Korea, a country ruled for five decades by one man with absolute authority. Kim Il-sung's faith cannot be compromised no matter what might be offered in return. We must make good use of this point in dealing with the North Korean nuclear problem. Con concerning the, this issue, President Clinton has recently made uh, a magnish, magnish mouse gesture by sending the Reverend Billy Graham, Billy Graham to Pyongyang with his own message to Kim Il-sung by receiving an emissary and message from the leader of the most powerful nation in the world, Kim Il-sung's stature has been greatly enhanced. Not long after that, North Korea accepted IAEA inspections to consider considerable degree, I believe, that Reverend Graham, Graham's Pyongyang visit played a considerable role in North Korea's chance of attitude. And uh, uh, I heard today that there is a good development, uh, you know, about uh, uh, nuclear inspection uh, between North Korea and uh, IAEA, uh, you know, with the uh, effort of American go between law. Uh, I propose to President Clinton that he send to China and North Korea an elder statement uh, respected internationally, trusted by the Chinese and North Koreans, and sharing the views of President Clinton. Mr. Clinton's emissary can play an important role there. In recent interviews with the American press, Kim Il-sung showed a gesture of conciliation 
and willingness to make concessions, he even expressed his wish to visit the United States. I urge Washington not to miss this opportunity. Kim Il-sung's visit here by itself will signal the end of 50-year-old warlike situation on the Korean Peninsula. His American visit may take the form of attitude the UN General Assembly as a leader of a member nation. A national press club may be suited, a national press club invitation may be suited to Kim Il-sung's visit very well. I must stress that the U.S. should consult closely with the South Korean government before sending the emissary to the North, lest the North Korea should believe it can divide the U.S. and South Korea. Furthermore, the emissary's mission may fail without the South Korean cooperation. Last but not least is the U.S.-Korean relationship. There are several points to be made about this. First, the U.S. must keep its troops in Korea. U.S. forces are needed not only to keep the North from attacking the South, but also to prevent an upset in the balance of the power in the region. Second, the U.S. should exercise leadership in creating a 2 plus 4 Northeast Asia Cooperative Security System. These six countries are North and South Korea plus the U.S., China, Russia, and Japan. This Northeast Asian, Asian security system may resemble a scaled-down version of CSCE, but I am not proposing that this multilateral system replace the existing security treaty between the U.S. and Korea. Third, Korea is the eighth largest trade, trading partner of the U.S., and I hope the two countries remain good economic partners for mutual long-term benefit. I might add that the trade conflict between our two nations should be resolved harmonious and with the patient patience instead of the ex excessive unilateral pressure. Fourth, some in the U.S. have raised fears of war and created excessive tension about the present, present nuclear problem. Koreans are worried about such attitudes in the U.S. Authorities of the U.S. and South Korea must maintain these cool and solve the problems patiently and peacefully. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been concerned about the rocky relations between the United States and North Korea and East Asian nations. I hope my brief remarks here today will help shed new light on desirable American approaches toward Asia and promote better understanding and cooperation between our two countries. Thank you for your listening to me with patience. Thank you very much, Dr. Kim. Uh, it is part of, uh, please have a seat for a minute. It is, it is part of National Press Club history that uh, the Korean War was actually caused by a National Press Club speech when Secretary of State Marshall spoke here in 1950 and outlined uh, the United States' security perimeter and left off South Korea. If uh, we could have a, uh, a role in ending the conflict on the Korean Peninsula by having Mr. Kim Il-sung speak here, as you, uh, you suggest, that would be, uh, we would certainly be pleased to do that. 
And I will ask uh, Speaker's Committee Chairwoman Christy Wise to get an invitation off to him as soon as possible. Uh, Dr. Kim, though, the first question is, why do you believe that Kim Il-sung would accept an invitation to visit the United States with conditions so tense today on the Korean Peninsula, wouldn't he prefer to remain in North Korea? Dr. Kim is having an interpreter uh, uh, go through the question for him so that uh, he can make sure he understands the whatever nuances are in there, uh, and then he can speak at his pleasure. Uh, thank you very much for your agreement uh, to send invitation to Kim Il-sung. And uh, uh, after you are sending invitation, if Kim Il-sung accept, uh, so much the better. But if not, uh, Kim Il-sung must be uh, criticized by uh, world opinion because he has he expressed his strong desire to come to the U.S., uh, enjoying uh, hunting and fishing here, and get, getting uh, friends here. So uh, uh, no rules for you uh, to, uh, in this effort to send an uh, uh, invitation to Kim Il-sung. Thank you. But uh, do you uh, really believe that he, uh, he can leave North Korea at this time? Uh, he's uh, 82 years old, I believe, and uh, uh, in ill health. Do you think that he could really leave North Korea at this time uh, and make this trip to the United States? problem of his visit, uh, we have not raised, but he raised. He was willing to come. So the, as he stated so, we send the invitation. So uh, whether his uh, health is good or not, or uh, Korean pen situation in Korean Peninsula, that's his own business, because he proposed his you know, uh, willingness. He, he, uh, express his willingness to come to the U.S. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, there must be, uh, uh, you know, some discussion uh, in the North when Kim Il Sung expressed uh, such a, a desire. So it is, uh, you know, good for you to test him, sending an uh, invitation to come to uh, the U.S. Uh, you have uh, said two things that uh, are s somewhat at discrepancy with each other. One is, is that uh, we should be respecting the internal rights of uh, Asian nations, such as China. Uh, the other is that we should be pushing for human rights. Now, in the matter of most favored nation status for China, do you think it is best for the United States to push for human rights in China by cutting off most favored nation status uh, for that country, or would that be counterproductive uh, to uh, getting China to agree to help with uh, North Korea? I am not saying uh, we should force the China to persuade North Korea to accept uh, nuclear uh, you know, uh, transparency uh, because of MFN. I am saying uh, China is sharing same interest with North Korean issue, North Korean nuclear issue. If North Korea does have uh, nuclear, South Korea may follow, and Japan, there is possibility Japan goes uh, nuclear way. 
if Japan wants, you know, uh, accept that way, uh, as we know, uh, you know, uh, Japan can become an uh, easy nuclear superpower uh, concerning its, uh, you know, economic and technical power. So this is absolutely serious problem for Chinese, uh, you know, national interest. That's why China is uh, uh, opposing any possibility of uh, North Korean nuclear possession. So that's why I, I told, I said in my speech, uh, this is not only American uh, problem, but also Chinese problem. So there's no relation of uh, MFN uh, issue. You proposed that uh, President Clinton send an elder statesman to China and North Korea. Can you give us an example of a specific person who you think would have the stature to carry out such a mission? I hope uh, such my remark uh, should not be taken as uh, my intervention in your domestic politics. Uh, so I am hesitating. But the uh, you know, chairman of this national press club is so, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, dignitarious. So I can't uh, resist uh, to his uh, question, not giving answer. Uh, so I will try. So I think one of the uh, most suitable uh, leader, uh, elder statement, must be President Carter. And uh, President Carter was a president who opened the uh, uh, diplomatic relations with, uh, Ch with China. So he is so suitable. And uh, also, uh, he is widely respected, trusted uh, by uh, international society. So in fact, yesterday, I have a telephone discussion with uh, President Carter uh, about uh, East Asian problem, including North Korean uh, nuclear issue. And also, as far as I know, North Korea has long admired President Carter. So they want to see President Carter visit North Korea. So if the U.S. sent such uh, an elder statement, statesman to North Korea, uh, that uh, will greatly you know, uh, compare uh, Kim Il-sung to make uh, some decisive uh, concession uh, towards the U.S. As you know well, uh, in North Korea, Kim Il-sung is the only man to make uh, concessions. So I think uh, whether uh, President Carter go to uh, China and North Korea, uh, officially or not, that's not my business, but uh, he must be one of the most suitable uh, elder statesmen to visit China uh, and North Korea. Uh, I think so. Thank you. The South Korean President uh, Kim, uh, Kim, Kim Young Sam, is he uh, aware of, of your proposals here today? And do you know if he, uh, if he supports what you are proposing? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, I have not uh, discussed with Kim, uh, Kim Young -sam, President Kim Young Sam about this uh, emissary. So there's no reason for me to uh, have uh, such discussion because this is uh, you know, American business. But uh, uh, I have uh, you know, long proposed uh, 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 President Kim, Kim, Kim Young Sam to have a, a summit meeting with Kim Il Sung as soon as possible. That is very necessary to reduce uh, mutual hatred and misunderstanding in, uh, between both countries, both governments, and to uh, restore reconciliation and uh, good cooperation between both sides. Uh, after my such proposal, 
President Kim Myung Sang uh, uh, responded, proposing North Korean Kim Il Sung, I am ready to meet with uh, Kim Il Sung uh, any time, any place, if Kim, he agrees. So uh, I, I want, uh, I really want to see his meeting with Kim Il Sung to solve our problem. Uh, we must realize the reconciliation, mutual cooperation, must develop a peaceful, uh, you know, reunification stage by stage. So I really want to uh, his such, uh, you know, meeting. And I have been long invited by North Korea. So I openly declared before my people, unless, unless uh, President Kim, Kim Young sang meet with Kim Il Sung, I will not go to the North. So I am waiting for his meeting with uh, uh, Kim Il Sung. Then I will consider uh, my visit to the North. Dr. Kim, you mentioned that Koreans fear certain U.S. attitudes that raise the specter of war. How would Korean opinion, what would Korean opinion be if the United States ignored the North Korean nuclear inspection stalling tactics? Our absolute condition uh, with North must be uh, North Korea's uh, agreement of uh, uh, you know, complete transparency of nuclear uh, ambition and nuclear problem. Uh, and uh, uh, without the realization of such thing, uh, you know, the U.S. or South Korea uh, shouldn't give any tolerance to North Korea. So uh, the uh, transparency of nuclear uh, issue comes first, but only to achieve a successful negotiation, I am proposing a, a simultaneous uh, negotiated package deal. So uh, uh, dealing between and the U.S. and North Korea uh, must be achieved uh, concurrently. So I don't think there is any uh, worry that we uh, lose our you know, position. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we should propose a negotiated package deal to North Korea. As North Korea many times stated uh, such thing by Kim Il-sung and top rank leaders. They said, we have no intention, no ability to produce nuclear weapon. Our first goal is to have a diplomatic relation with the US. They defeated such you know, advocacy. So now we should say, yes, now we will allow diplomatic relation. So you should prove your you know, uh, remarks was true, accepting uh, nuclear transparency. We, we are in a such position. So if North Korea accept this, that's good. If not, we should ask China to persuade North Korea. And uh, if North Korea doesn't agree such Chinese pursuit, then with China, we should bring North Korea to the UN economic sanction. If China be cooperative, economic sanction will be very effective. This is our way. Nothing to lose. We doesn't need, don't need uh, much time to solve this problem. Yesterday, when I met with uh, uh, you know, State Department leaders, including uh, Assistant Secretary Galuji, I told them it is time for us to 
uh, put an end to this problem. We have consumed too much time. If we continue such thing, it's not good for us. The longer we you know, continue such nuclear negotiation with North Korea, the more the US and South Korea must lose its you know, prestige. Uh, nothing to gain. I suggest him. Uh, this is my you know, analysis and suggestion. Thank you. As I said before, Kim Il-sung himself is 82 years old, and his son, who is the heir apparent, has been described in the American media as uh, uh, unstable. Do you think that there is a uh, pressure to get some kind of resolution to this thing while Kim Il-sung is still alive? There has been a, a long saying in, in, in Korea and abroad. As long as Kim Il-sung is alive, there will be no change. Uh, uh, but uh, reality, reality is not tr uh, true, is not so. Uh, in 1991, after collapse of Soviet Union, uh, Kim Il-sung made uh, three major concessions, as I uh, mentioned in this, uh, my speech. Uh, simultaneous entry to the UN, cross recognition, and uh, uh, you know, mutual recognition as uh, uh, legitimate entities between both Koreas. So Kim Il-sung made such significant concessions to others. Only Kim Il-sung makes such things. Because about these, these three of our proposals, North Korea have, has long advocated, even more than 30 years, this kind of American imperialist plot to divide our nation forever. So we shouldn't ex accept such you know, uh, plot. But Kim Il-sung did this without uh, disturbance in the North. Kim Il-sung is like almighty man in the North, whether it is good or not. We don't support such system. Uh, no doubt, after Kim Il-sung, even if Kim Jong-il succeed his father's position safely, but Kim Jong-il couldn't, couldn't exercise the same authority and couldn't be strong uh, you know, like Kim, Kim Il-sung. Uh, I suggest uh, 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 in uh, another speech, which was delivered yesterday before American Enterprise Institute, uh, in that speech, I strongly suggested we should solve the problem before Kim Il-sung death. But, uh, <coughs> and uh, let me tell you, this is not my own judgment, but uh, uh, American experts' judgment, such as uh, former, uh, you know, uh, the U.S. ambassador to Korea, uh, I know two of uh, such ambassadors whom I met, they told me same their analysis. We should solve this problem before Kim Song death. Uh, and uh, as far as I know, uh, Chinese government also think that before Kim Song death, uh, problem in Korean Peninsula should be solved. And if you allow me, about uh, different relations with North. This is not, you know, how, uh, the, you know, this not uh, the, you know, giving, uh, allowing of, uh, you know, privilege. In a sense, this is uh, our promise with two reasons. One is uh, in 1991, North Korea became a regular UN member. Uh, with the blessing of the U.S. government. So diplomacy doesn't mean uh, uh, you know, a lie or a friendly country, but mean uh, you know, relation with the existing country. It is contradictory for us not to have a regular U.N. member, not to have a diplomatic relations with the U regular U.N. member. 
And in addition, when in 1973, South Korean then President Park Chung hee proposed this, you know, cross recognition, since that time, including the US, the West have the, has long supported this. But now, uh, cross recognition is only working on our side, not North Korean side. North Korea feels kind of breach of promise. And also, diplomacy is not, uh, you know, advantageous only for North Korea, but for us. Imagine if we have uh, tens of, you know, our embassy buildings in the north with uh, hundreds of, uh, you know, our diplomats from uh, Western society and South Korea. And uh, naturally, there will be our businessmen, uh, you know, to invest there, uh, you know, with North Korean businessmen. And tourists, tourism will be there. Many of the tourists go to North Korea. Then such things will greatly change the atmosphere uh, in, in North Korea, uh, you know, pushing North Korea to become another China. So let me tell you, uh, you know, as my conclusion, let's make North Korea, you know, to uh, involve in economic development. Then North Korean economy become, uh, you know, better. Uh, when, as you know, it is natural. When we feel uh, hungry, we get angry. But we feel uh, full of stomach, we laugh. This China is a good example. During the uh, Cultural Revolution, how much China was hostile. But now, with the uh, you know, prosperous economy, how much Chinese people is laughing? In their mind, there is no Mao Zedong or cultural revolution or socialism. Very little, you know. But uh, in their mind, there is uh, you know, business and making money. So we should make North Korea another you know, China. Uh, this is what we should take to solve a problem uh, you know, peacefully, uh, uh, I think. Uh, you mentioned often in your speech uh, the need to make uh, face-saving uh, overtures to uh, Asian leaders. Do you believe the United States government at times has acted arrogantly in its dealings with East Asia? Difficult question, uh, but uh, unfortunately, I feel uh, many of American people, uh, Asian people, feel that. Uh, so uh, they, uh, so they, uh, when there is a problem about uh, trade issue or other things, American uh, has been uh, uh, time to time too much suppressive. Even we feel uh, somewhat, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> in uh, somewhat uh, too strong. Uh, so, uh, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, uh, Asian people take face saving most important. And so, uh, 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 with uh, uh, some moderate attitude to save. Asian peoples, uh, then that will be uh, good uh, for the U.S. Uh, not losing friend, but uh, to achieve, uh, uh, you know, its goal with uh, uh, you know voluntary uh, cooperation, uh, but expressed by uh, East Asian governments. Uh, sometimes it may need time. But uh, such an impatient attitude uh, very much deserve to take. If America has a uh, 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 strong attitude, suppressive attitude, it may be helpful uh, in sometimes uh, to get uh, short sight interest. But I am afraid it will lose, uh, uh, you know, friends, 
uh, uh, and uh, in long term, it will be harmful to uh, American, uh, you know, uh, interest. Uh, as far as I know, uh, in e East Asian countries, uh, basically speaking, they want to be uh, cooperative with the U.S. Uh, if only the U.S. can understand their situation, if only U U.S. can take, uh, you know, uh, such a face-saving attitude, then I think they would be much more willing to be cooperative with the U.S. Uh, I say this as one Asian people. I have been uh, long supported American democracy, and uh, I have owed much uh, Amer America uh, in the course of my struggle uh, against dictatorship, because uh, I saved my life two times. So I am saying I, I have always feel uh, some, uh, you know, a burden to uh, America. So I am saying this as a real friend of uh, America. So I have a worry that uh, such recent American, you know, s somewhat strong attitude is uh, gradually losing Asian people friendship. I am afraid this. Uh, following up on what you just said, one questioner asked, can you tell us whether it is true as has been reported over the years that the American CIA intervened to stop the Korean CIA from killing you after you were kidnapped from Japan. Yes, that was really true, uh, really true. Uh, without such a, uh, American uh, intervention, my, my life would not be saved. Uh, in 1973, that time I was in exile uh, in the U.S. and Japan. Uh, at the end, uh, uh, in uh, uh, August, I was in, I was abducted uh, in at uh, you know some uh, Tokyo hotel. Uh, abductors, a Korean CIA men, first had uh, a plan to uh, kill me in the bus stop, hotel bus stop, dismembering my body. So they uh, prepared three uh, look sacks, uh, you know, heap of uh, tissue paper, uh, strings. But uh, they give up, gave up uh, in killing me at the bus stop because I shouted help. So they afraid of my voice was known by others. Uh, they uh, brought me to the uh, you know, uh, see, uh, leaving all these things, looks like you know, paper, and, and also they left their North Korean uh, cigarette, uh, disguising North Korean uh, you know, the ac activity. And in, in the ship, Heishai uh, ship, I was about to be thrown into the sea. My whole body was, you know, tightly tightened. That very moment, uh, as far as I know, Japanese plane came there uh, over the ship and, uh, you know, uh, through a uh, you know, warning bomb. So uh, I was narrowly escaped from the death. That time, American CIA uh, visited Korean president, warning not to kill me, and provided this information to a Japanese uh, government, as far as I co confirmed you know, president. So uh, I, am, I have, uh, you know, uh, I was able to be saved with such American CIA activity at that time. And also in 1980, when I was sentenced to death, uh, without the American uh, you know, effort to save my life, uh, together with world opinion, my life uh, will not be saved, would not be saved. that time, President and President-elect Reagan, it was in, in 1980 made their best effort to save my life. So uh, I don't know this time uh, in 1980 whether CIA involved this, in this case or not, but it is true that the American government saved, uh, co much contributed to save my life. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. That was excellent. I'm afraid we are out of time. In honor of your appearing here and to save face, uh, <laughs> we would like to present you with a, a certificate of appreciation for appearing here and with our traditional National Press Club mug, which uh, uh, we certainly and certainly appreciate your coming here today. My honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, that concludes our program for today. That was quite a moving story, sir. So. Thank very, you, very moving you. story. Thank you very much for sharing all that with us. Uh, it, seemed, it seemed like you were saying something very significant here. That is this a, a new initiative? You think from the South Korean government?